Now, a few of the other things that we've had to do recently is uh, we've gone through rebranding. Originally, uh, we tried to relaunch the brand as Sunbury Radio when we were Energy Radio, and before that, we were Buller FM. The branding failed. We, uh, the membership didn't really understand what we were trying to do. It failed. We had a really poor website. And I think the, we, we asked for some feedback from the community about our original logo, which I won't show you. And it was referred to as looking like it was from McDonald's. It was just a big red logo with a clip art picture of a sun. And in black, it said Sunbury Radio. You could hardly read it. So obviously, uh, we ended up going through. And we actually started to build a brand new website. Um, it's mobile friendly. Um, called Sunbury Radio, well, literally Sunbury Radio. Uh, we came up with a new logo design, strong colours, and uh, we also put all of our internet streaming capabilities on there, as well as our um, social media assets. We also wanted to do other things, such as introducing community features. One thing that we found as a small community radio station was it was really difficult for people to ring up the station and say, right, oh, we've got an event happening. Um, can you guys broadcast the details? So we made it a bit more self-service. We've actually got a calendar on the website that people can put details in about certain events, and that'll appear on there. And then our presenters can take that information straight off the website and put that into their um, into uh, their daily readings. So we're actually being able to interact during times when no one's at the studio. Our sponsors like it. They actually like the fact that we've got bright colours and that they're actually being thanked for the fact that we're taking money out of their um, their hard-earned pockets. Because at the end of the day. Community, you know, grants are getting tighter, funds are getting harder to, uh, to grab onto for smaller stations. However, our sponsors do uh, are still our bread and butter on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we also started working on trying to put um, uh, all our podcasts online as well. Uh, I think we will use. I think um, we stopped using this company at the moment, but we are looking for a different one. This was Omni. Basically, they've got some software that you can put onto your, um, onto your logging computer. You tell it when you want it to record, it'll just send it straight to their website, and then you're able to just produce podcasts. And you can actually take sections of, pod, um, of podcasts and then have them all lined up for listeners as well, and we found that to be fantastic. But on top of that, we also started working on trying to simplify our, um, our management system. So our website also manages all of our member data. Membership renewals can be purchased via credit card, straight online. As soon as you put your credit card details in and click next, all of a sudden you'll get an email in your inbox saying congratulations, you're now a member of Sunbury Radio, and um, our admin team will get an email as well saying check out the details, give this person a call, let them know that they're being loved. The software that we're using to make this all happen is free and open source. So the website itself is a system called Joomla, J-O-O-M-L-A. Um, any website designer can use it. There's also other systems out there as well that, use, um, that you can use. Um, but our actual membership management system is a system that's also open source called CVCRM. Um, a fantastic and powerful system. You're able to put in every bit of information about every person that interacts with the station, be it a member, be it a community organisation, or be it a sponsor. And best of all, at one click, you're able to generate reports which say, right, oh, these are all our members that haven't paid their renewal fee. These are all of our sponsors this month that need to, um, that we need to chase up to get more money out of. Things like that. But you're also able to do all of your um, emails through it as well, and it keeps a log. So if, so if uh, you've got multiple people that are trying to uh, uh, work with somebody, all that information can go in there. So we actually use it um, for incident management as well. If someone puts in a complaint, we're actually able to put in there all the details in relation to someone's complaint, or be it internal or external, and follow it all the way through. So if ACMA comes up to us and says, hey guys, you, got, you received a complaint, and we've been told that you haven't handled it, we can go, no, 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 print off the report. This is everyone who interacted. These were the times that they were responded with, and, um, and these are all the details. Um, we actually did have some presenters at our radio station that did cause a big fuss. They actually threatened to, um, to hurt the station. Well, that information was logged. They threatened to go to the ACMA. ACMA rang us up. We said, here's all the details. They've gone, you've got a system that manages like this. We just expected a spreadsheet. These systems make life easy. If you've got a web designer that you can get a sponsorship off and tell them, hey, can you whack in CVCRM? They'll probably do it for you because it takes them an extra 10 minutes to set up and, and install. But it's worth using because it centralizes all your management. You don't have 50 spreadsheets within, uh, within, um, with inaccurate information anymore. It's all in there, it's all up to date, and you know who's made the changes as well. And best of all, when it's free, I'm not complaining. One of the other things that we did do 